What's up guys, it's Natural here and welcome back to another football round of video this week. Last week with, with last week the internationals were on and I didn't really want to bother talking about internationals. So I thought I'd take a two week break from talking about it. And what have I done in that, since the last upload? I went to watch the new Logan movie. Really good, really entertaining, really, uh, really good actually. And would I recommend it? Yes, I would recommend it. Good movie and... I'm not going to give away the story, but it's really enjoyable to watch. Anyway, enough about that. Let's start off with the Premier League. And in the Premier League this weekend, the big game was Arsenal versus Manchester City, which finished 2 2. Man City, in the first 10 minutes, were unplayable. They should have been 2 0 up. Sandy scored the first goal. You could see bad defender from Arsenal. They could have scored again from Kevin De Bruyne who hit the post. And then Arsenal got into the game a bit. Man City put the handbrake off for whatever reason. And let Arsenal back in the game. They got a goal back from Theo Walcott. And then 30 seconds later, Kevin De Bruyne hit the other post. Yes, right, he hit both posts in this game. After that, that was so putting a nice little pass into Aguero. Aguero does what he always does. Puts in the back of the net. 2-1. And then you think, okay, Man City, this could be... The win and Arsenal is the whole Arsenal again, back to square one again. But you get credit to Arsenal, they made a couple of changes at halftime due to the injury, so does, so does City as well. And then the, the corner. That's right, Arsenal conceded from a set piece against West Brom, but then they realised Man City, who are terrible at defending some set pieces too. Murasaka, Murasaka, uh, Mustafi with a good header into the net, 2 2. You could say it's bad goalkeeping and bad defending all around in this game. Both teams doesn't make a difference to them at all. Two, the point doesn't make any reading really because Man City pretty much need a win and Arsenal need a win and you get a draw. So that doesn't really favour any team really. Elsewhere to talk about is, is it Hedderis back on again? Because Crystal Palace get their biggest upset of the weekend, which is a massive win against Chelsea at Stamford Bridge. They win 2-1. Big Sam has done a remarkable job since he's been there. They've won four games in a row. Amazing. The fact that they just beat probably champions-elect Chelsea, but we may have Hedderis on again. Good. I mean, taking away from Crystal Palace, Wilfred Zaha looks like the Zaha that Manchester United did sign because he was unplayable, his skills, his goal, his, his all round com contribution to the game was amazing. I mean, uh, literally the Chelsea defenders couldn't deal with him. And his first goal was fantastic, fantastic. And then, you know, Chelsea scored the first goal, thanks to Fabregas. You know, you're not to say that, he was playing today, but anyway, good finish for Fabregas, good nice play from Hazard. Uh, Wolf is a high, like I said, got the goal back. Good individual of himself. Christian Benteke somehow dinks over Portra. Who the fuck Benteke scores that type of goal? And Chelsea, you know, had so many chances. Hennessy made some good saves. Sacco, who was brilliant in defence for Crystal Palace. Massive win for Crystal Palace to get them a mega gap, a big gap between them and the bottom three. Chelsea slip up, but it may just be a little bit of sort of, you know, it was one of those games for Chelsea, but. We find out later on because Tottenham beat Burnley 2-0 thanks to no Harry Kane. But who cares when you got Eric Dyer and Son banging in for them. So yeah, I mean Burnley, they're at the minute, Wales are starting to rub up, starting to really struggle for them. They are 16th in the league right now and they are only a couple points up the relegation zone. Are they back in the relegation zone? Do, or is it just a little blip for them too? But as for Tottenham, 7 points now, the gap. They could easily. I'm not saying that, that, that Tottenham could win the league, but last season, you know, Tottenham were fame for Leicester and they had a terrible end of the season. Anything can happen from now to the end of the season. I'm not saying that Tottenham are going to win the league. I'm just saying we'll see how the next couple of games go and then we'll find out is there a tether race or not. Leicester City get a massive win against Stoke City. Stoke City season is pretty much just failing out. As for Leicester, massive win. Craig Shakespeare is the first English coach, first English manager to win four game, I think four Premier League games in a row. Remarkable achievement, remarkable what he's done since he's been there, since he sacked Claudio Ranieri. Incredible. Leicester now on 33 points. They look safe right now and they really are the form team in the Premier League. Paul City get a massive win against West Ham. 
and cuts the gap between the bottom to get them out of the bottom three, but the gap now is only a point. The fact is, Hall West Ham right now are, if they're not careful, they haven't won in so long, they could easily find themselves in the relegation battle. They're only six points, they've got a very goal difference, they have a little cushion, but that gap, because they have, ma they have horrible fixtures coming up, they have Arsenal midweek, then they have Everton, Liverpool, Chelsea, they have not good games at the minute, um, West Ham. As for Hull, it's ever since Marco Silva's been there, it, their home form is incredible. I think he's only lost one game since uh, in his career at home in three years, which I had to look at stat up, which I was gobsmacked. Incredible. Marco Silva's given him a bit of life, a bit of breathe, a bit of d desire for Hull to stay up this year. As for West Ham, they're not careful. They could go down. Manchester United get an ugly, scrappy, no no game against West Brom. West Brom, well, you know what you get from West Brom, they're going to put 10 men in the ball, score from a set piece. Manchester United were poor, but hold, West Brom didn't do anything in the game. I don't think, I think they only had one shot on target, which was down to his ball, well, fumble really, I don't know what he was doing, hit off the bar. I mean, Manchester United had a couple of chances, they feel, um, Manchester United did have a couple of chances, Rashford had a, couple, had a free kick, probably from that. Film must be 37 yards. Good save, Ben Foster. But my United, this is the this is the type of games they've drawn. They have drawn eight games home this season. They've drawn eleven in the season. They had only I think they're the only Premier League team to last three games in in the league. But they've drawn eleven, eleven times this season. I would rather lose games than ever. You win and you lose, win and you lose instead of drawing games. They've drawn far too many games, and that's probably why they're not going to stop for. West Brom had a great season, eight. They've been the best of the rest this year. And Tony Pulis may be nominated for the manager of the season. Watford get a 1 0 win against Doomdoland, who are literally are doomed and they won't stay up. They are down and they're finished. And that's the end of me talking about Sunderland. Watford, great win for them. That's probably kept them up in the Premier League for another season. Hampton get a 0 0 game, another bad game against Bournemouth. Bournemouth, who missed the penalty and they have had some bad penalties this in the last couple of weeks. Thanks to you know, a full bay missed pen. King has missed a penalty, and now Harry Hart has missed a penalty. They are literally the curse of penalties. They have a level cruise are incredible in terms of missing penalties this season. It's amazing. Someone's always put a curse on them or something. But the game, again, it wasn't a great game. So Hampton had a couple of chances. They were probably their best player. It was probably Jay Rodriguez. He had a couple of shots. But again, I think Gabardini did not really, he's not really the same as Gabardini. But yeah, it's, it's not been a... It's been it's pretty much both teams safe, both teams mid table, that's where they are. Yeah, sorry I finished no no wasn't a great game. So it was another no no game between a relegation six pointer which finished goals. Now I'm saying this game other than so Gilby Sigerson free kick was a penalty. I don't know what Forshaw is doing doing this anyway, but and then the big chance, what a ball from the Gredo. Guess that this is the reason why this guy didn't do it for Aston Villa. And somehow they signed him, was, even though he doesn't score goals, and he just missed an absolute sitter. Nil nil, both teams, doesn't, like I said, doesn't serve any team really. I think he's putting him as a point game for Swansea, but again, doesn't really suit any team at all. And the last game I'm talking about is the Merseyside Derby, which Liverpool humiliated Everton 3 1, and Everton called them, think, oh, we're going to close the gap now, then. we're closing the gap to Liverpool. But guess what? That showed you Liverpool Everton are miles not just behind the tops the the, the, the team Chelsea it's the top names the Arsenal they're not even close to Liverpool they are rivals they call them they think they're going on levels don't get me wrong I like Everton's team they got good players but the fact of the matter is in big games against Merseyside teams against the arch rivals Liverpool they don't do it they haven't won at Anfield since 1990 they haven't won a Merseyside derby since I think since 2007 that's not good enough for Everton. That's not good enough. Until Everton get that voodoo of not beating their arch rivals, Liverpool and other big teams away from home, they are not going to finish top four. And certainly how they are not fin not even close to Liverpool as it stands right now. As Liverpool great win to get them and get them third in the league, they look like they're going to finish top four this season. If they, if they, they've had a decent season in Liverpool, Jurgen Klopp's playing some fantastic football. Manny Coutinho was unplayable in the game. A good win for the Liverpool. Now guys, look at the Premier League table where that defeat for Chelsea has, got, has cut the gap from 10-7 to 7 to Tottenham. 
10 points behind Liverpool or Chelsea. Or, or, yeah, Liverpool 10 points behind Chelsea. Man City, the draw doesn't really favour them either. They're fourth. Arsenal, so Man City, Manchester, Manchester United are fifth. Then Arsenal, then Everton. The bottom three doesn't change. Sunderland are relegated in my terms. They are. They may not be automatically relegated, but they are. Mothers of look like they're going to join them. And Hull, Swansea looks like between those two for the last spot. Now let's move on to the Bundesliga. And in the Bundesliga this weekend, Bayern Munich thrash Augsburg 6 0. Lewandowski is another hat trick. He is closing Aubameyang for that golden boot. And speaking of Dortmund, they drew 1 1 against the arch rival Schalke. Leipzig put 4 past Darmstadt, who are relegated pretty much. Starting with Bayern Munich. Bayern Munich showing their class and superiority in this game. 6 0 win. They literally are the informed team. They've scored 25 goals in the past 6 games. No one's topping them right now. They're 13 points clear. They look like they're going to win an Orban League title. And Lewandowski looks like he's going to win that golden boot. Dan Leipzig get a 4 0 win against Darmstadt. Good win for them to at least get second. Schalke, good fighting spirit to get back into the game after the one they're doing thanks to Aubameyang. So he does some Stuart celebration with a mask. I don't know what it's all about. Some of their sponsorship. And the fact of the matter is it all ended badly because a mascot showed the red card to the referee. The referee didn't happy. It looks like he's going to have a court case, which I find amazing because I think the mascot's a legend. This weird game and it was just it summed up Dory Mance, it doesn't it? But that's it again, two points job for Darkman. Hoffenheim, who have been absolutely a revelation this season in the Bundesliga, have won 3 1 against Hertha Berlin. Great win for them, away to Hertha Berlin. They're now third in the league, ahead of Dortmund. You told me at the start of the season, Hoffenheim, who by the way, this time a year ago, walked bottom of the Bundesliga, are now third in the Bundesliga. Amazing season they're having. That manager has been the best young manager we've seen, probably since Eddie Howe. He's done a remarkable job there. He won't be at Hoffenheim next season. And they've had some good players on that team too, and they probably will be sold, and they've had a great season. And Hertha Berlin looks like they're going to finish in Europe, Europe League spot. Iber get absolutely destroyed by River Bremen, the informed team in the Bundesliga, apart from Bayern Munich, and River Bremen. They are flying at the man. They've now won their fifth Bundesliga in a row. They are now way up the table. Looks like they forget they're not going to get relegated. Looks like they're going to have a good end of the season, and they bring out some good young players too. Good luck for them. And we're going to have Laura game, which finished 3 3. Mario Gomez gets his first Bundesliga hat trick since. Signing for Wolfsburg. Leverkusen were 2 0 up in this game. They were 2 0 up. And same with Leverkusen, this season they have had some shocking, 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 shocking defending we've seen this season. We've seen that for Leverkusen. How they are, I think, 12th in the league. They've had a horrific season. The manager got the sack. Looks like the next the manager they have in, he isn't going to be there next year. A lot of, a lot of tension on. Not, something's not right at Leverkusen, but the Jeff Cup looks like the best player, or whatever it Brandt, is going to be sold to Bayern or Liverpool. Not been a great season for Leverkusen. For Leverkusen. As for Wolfsburg, you call that a point gained or a point or two points dropped because they were 1 3 2 with a couple minutes remaining. But I say it's a point game when you're 2 0 down. But hey, it, it's just one of them weird games. Anyway, guys, now let's look at the Bundesliga table where Bayern Munich. Still 13 points player, Leipzig. Looks like they're going to finish second. Hawaii are third, which is incredible. Dortmund are fourth. And then you got the rest in those top, in, um, in those places in the Bundesliga. The bottom, chain, nothing changes. Dom's not, England's not, looks like they're going to relegate. And then you got the rest, Hamburg. Even Mainz. No, Mainz are in it. Mainz are struggling man, after their loss at the weekend. Are they in a relegation? They could be in a relegation fight, not playoff. Now, guys, let's move on to La Liga. Where Real Madrid went 3 0 against Alves. Barcelona destroyed Granada 4 1. Atletico Madrid do what Atletico Madrid always do and win 2 0 away to Malaga. As Real Madrid, Real Madrid went 3 0. Benzema on the score sheet, I think for the first time in a while. So then, it was an easy win for Real Madrid. It may took them half an hour to score the first goal, but Alves, they had a decent season. They're in the cup, they're in the final of the Spanish Cup, the Cup of the Ray. They're going to be, uh, that's their main focus from the end of the season. Real Madrid still look like the team to beat. Barcelona got a 4-1 win against Granada and the gap was 5, is now still down to 2. The gap was 5, is now back to 2 again after Barcelona's win. Neymar, Suarez, 
It's the same old story, isn't it? You got the same SM, MSM, do what MSM does. Letting Madrid went through now against Malaga, a good win for Letting Madrid. Looks like they are trying to finish third after Sevilla, who only drew against relegation fighting Sporting Heat on, which isn't good for Sevilla, because now it looks like Letting Madrid may overtake them and may even finish, and they could be fighting hard to even finish top four this season. Real Sociedad a point against another team fighting for relegation in Leganes. Another point drop, that's two points drop again for Real Sociedad. They keep doing it every season, I don't know what it is. And the last thing I'm talking about is Balenciennes free one against Deportivo La Coruña. Yes, probably, it's probably, this win has probably kept Valencia in La Liga for another season. I just hope this will give them more momentum to Valencia because they have turmoil for so long now. I, do, I like to see Valencia go back to the old days, bring in a, 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 a young manager and give them some youth players coming through the ranks and give them a chance because right now, they're going to look like to be fighting for relegation next season. As a Deborah table, they're not safe yet. At all. Now guys, let's look at the La Liga table where Real Madrid is still two points clear of Barcelona. Let it go Madrid, Sevilla and the rest pretty much make up the table. The bottom three, still the bottom three. Osasuna, Granada are pretty much relegated. Now guys, let's move on to Serie Ah, and the big game in Serie A this weekend was Juventus versus Napoli, and it was an absolute cracking game. But Cadera scored the first goal for Juventus, a nice bit of play. Cristiano was bad defending, but this, the, the, the comeback from Napoli, the goal from, from Hamshik, the ball from Mertens is absolutely amazing. He's been, I, I, he's been incredible at, Sevilla, at, at Napoli this season. He's been amazing. Uh, you, you think they saw him going in? And then they bought Milik and thought he was the guy. The fact of the matter is Milik got a massive injury. Oh, it was, it was now the main Milik finished top four. The fact he's come in, he's been amazing Mertens. Over 20 goals in, in the Serie A this season. The assist he has is amazing. He puts a nice ball into Beautiful pass into Hamshik. Hamshik does what he always does in big games. Scores. Nice finish. 1-1. They could have won it. Mertens, you know, it was good to clean off the line from Chiellini. But, you know, it's a good... Point for Napoli in the title race. Is Serie A, is, is Scudetto title race back on again? Because Roma beat Empoli 2 now, thanks to who else but Eden Jackman, who's now the top goal scorer in Serie A, by, by the way. A lot of Man City fans may be thinking, what the hell? <laughs> um, but yes, good win for Roma. Are they, are they back in the title race now, Roma? Because the gap right now is 5 points. Maybe, maybe not. We don't know. We have to see the rest of the football fixtures play out. For me, it's more just, we'll see, we'll see. Lazio get 2 on it against Sassuolo. They were 1-0 down this game. They come back, thanks to who else but Immobile. Who else but Immobile. Does, does best. Two goals. Lazio may have an, out an outside chance of finishing the Champions League. May have an outside chance. Atlanta humiliated Genoa 5-0. Thanks to a hat-trick for the Atlanta player. Good hat-trick. Beautiful bicycle kick for the first goal, by the way. AC Milan dropped more points against Pascara. Not good enough from AC Milan. I mean, Pascara looked like they're down anyway. Why would you? This is some sort of Milan. It was bad goalkeeper from Donnarumma. I, I mean, it was terrible bad, terrible back pass anyway. I mean, I, I don't understand why you're back passing it there. That's pretty amazing. But he's getting a lot of stick, Donnarumma. I think it was a bad back, bad, a bad back pass. But Pascara do what Pascara do. They're terrible, terrible home form. It's incredible. But AC Milan again. This is the reason why they're probably going to finish the season. And that's going to talk about is a massive win for Crotone against Chievo. Great win for them. They're the only team, for me, that could stay up in Syria and maybe relegate Empoli, who haven't won in seven now. Looks like it's going to be a very interesting end of the season in Syria. Now, guys, welcome to Syria. Table words. You have to still top, but the gap is now five behind Roma. Now, we get a good point. Lazio are now closing the gap to Napoli. Atlanta enter the rest, pretty much make it up. Bottom three, Crotone look like the only team to catch Empoli. Now, guys, let's move on to League Earn. With the big two not playing this weekend because they're playing in the French League Cup, which PSG absolutely destroy 
Monaco in the final. Cavani does what Cavani does. Scores from big game finals like he does. Two, two again in the final. Um, but you have, to give, you have to give credit to Monaco. You know, they did, they did, they did play with Monaco do really. They're terrible defending anyway. But it was a great final. Good win for PSG. One silverware for them this year. They still have two. They still have the league earned title. We're still in there. And they're also in the, doing well in the French League Cup. So, looks like maybe a treble one for, for them this year from, for PSG. Monaco, uh, is, is this happening there for them for now the end of the season? I hope not because they've had a fantastic season this year. I hope it doesn't, I really hope. But anyway, that's the French League Cup. Speaking of league earned, Nice get a massive win against Bordeaux. 2-1 win for them, which pretty much gives them a little bit of a chance of fighting for the league earned title with Monaco and PSG. But I still think that they are real outsiders to win this this year. But hey, we never know. Teams could drop points from left and centre. We don't know. Ren get a 1-1 draw against Lyon. Lyon won this game 1 though. Lyon were leading this game 1 though. And Ren just come back and get a goal. Even though we're down to 10 minutes for the whole game. Like I said, missed a penalty. You think you put your mortgage on that guy scoring penalties. It's amazing. Again, this sums up Lyon's season. Away from home, they are being horrific. Away from home this season. I think they've only won 4 games away from home this season. Which is the lowest in Ligue 1 this season. Which is sums up where they are really, Monaco. Where they are, Lyon. Marseille as well get a draw against Dijon, and then and that's another poor result again for Marseille. And this is home too. Dijon won up. Payet rescued him with a well, bend it like Payet really. Goal. Um, and our pad said, yeah, yeah, and a lot like Lyon. Marseille had a poor season. And last game to talk about is a massive win for Lyon. They've now won two games on the spin. Could they stay up? They may. Because you know, they're in better form after beating relegation fight in Cannes. They could stay up now, Lorient. They really could. Now, let's look at the, uh, let's look at the Ligue 1 table with a big two not playing because of the French League Cup final, which PSG won. 4 1. Nice caught the gap to the top two, but top two play on Tuesday and Wednesday. Nothing's changed in the bottom at all. Lorient looks like the only team that can stay up in Ligue 1. Now, guys, let's move on to the rest of Europe. And the rest of Europe, the biggest game in the, the biggest game in it was Porto against Benfica in the Classico and it didn't and it shipped up fantastic because it was a really good game. Benfica won the up in this game and you think they're gonna okay when the scores go all oh, they say they're gonna win, they're gonna get more goals. You get grabbed to Porto, they came back in the game, Maxi Pereira there uh, player an, uh, an ex Benfica player scores in the game. It's literally incredible really. He got booed and cheered and things flowing out of him the whole game. But give me a quick credit to him for scoring and even, you know, celebrating really. Because not a lot of ex players do that. Uh, but they got so many chances. Casillas had an amazing game. Machado had so many chances. Jonas had incredible chances, even though he scored the penalty. But it looks like it's going to be a really interesting end to the Liga Nost Tetris for those two. Sporting Lisbon get a 2 1 win against. Some team in Portugal, good win for them. Looks like they've found. Looks like they're going to finish third. I don't think they're fighting the big two for the Terra base. They've got far too much work to do. But looks like they're going to finish third this season. Braga drew three three. They've had a horrible season. They may even finish fifth. And we move on to their busy. Where the big game in their busy this weekend was Ajax versus Feyenoord. The two teams fighting for Terra base. Ajax win thanks to an absolute screamer of a goal from. One of the Ajax players, it was absolutely unbelievable, incredible, he scored that from 40 yards out, the ball just moved and swerved, incredible, great great finish, great win for Ajax, massive to beat final, the gap now is 3 points, PSV also win as well, 2-0 against Sparta Rotherham, are they back in the Teddy race after this defeat for final, it's going to be a really interesting end in the Teddy race, in all leagues, so guys that is the football roundup for another week. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Please like, subscribe, the natural.